Hello and welcome to a pair of Dice Lost podcasting channel. My name is Brendan, my pronouns are he, him, and I'll be your storyteller for this game about living gods on the wrong side of the law. Joining me for this game is... Hey there guys, my name is Tyler, uh, pronouns are he, him, I'm going to be playing uh, Ricky, the fire affected street exorcist. Hi everybody, my name is Christina, I will be playing Elion. My pronouns are she, her, and Elion's pronouns are they, them. They are a water aspected investigator. Hi everyone, my name's Cody, pronouns are he, they, and I play Amalar Divine, the air aspected shady businessman. Hi, my name is Britt, and my pronouns are she and her. I play a wood aspect named Rush Ferris, who has a ferret familiar named Zeke. Together, they specialize in archery, larceny, and dance. Hi, I'm Michaela, she, her, and I'll be playing Tarali of House Regara, an earth aspected leader of a small military force known as the Tyrants, who collects the books for the gang. And this is Exalted, like a dragon blooded. Act 2 Relics and Revelations. Time for the swarm to go. And this is where the things get really fun. Because I don't know that you've ever been hit by a battle group. I know that your dudes have also never been hit by a battle group because I'm very bad at rolling sometimes. Um, but one of the fun things about battle groups uh, is they can hit everyone on the on the field of combat if they want to. Uh, if they're like size three or larger. So they are going to make an attack against the tyrants and you at the same time. Marvelous. So a bunch of sharks are coming in. And are you going to try and evade Perry or, uh, and did you want to pump it at all? Cause the, uh, unfortunately the, the, the things do not stick over from like one attack to the next. Since it's for a, I mean, um, is there a way for me to bolster the my battle groups? Are they to parry or will it just be for me? It, it would just be for you. Uh, you might be able to bolster it with war charms, but that's the only thing I could really think of. Also, if I recall, your dude's uh, defenses are actually pretty good because you have a uh, for, because you have an elite group. I personally, uh, Tirali would try to parry this time, having successfully dodged the giant shark if there's a battle group incoming. Mm -hmm. I'll see if I can avoid one of the incoming sharks and take it down from behind, like sidestep to the side and grab a fin and rip something off of the shark. Okay. Sounds good. I'll give you an extra. Uh, I'll give you an extra one to your parry for that. And I'm gonna just make a blanket roll for them. So your parry would be a six, then. Yeah, and then and then your dudes are at uh, a seven. So I've got to roll a six to hit you and a seven to hit them. Well, damn. What happened to Roland Bad? I know, right? Okay, so let me let me get yours done first because you're going to be the because battle groups attacking a player character is weirder than battle groups attacking battle groups. So their damage is uh, what is your soak? Their damage is going to be a one T that they're throwing at you. Why? Why? My natural soak is nine. Your natural soak is nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then they're they're throwing eleven at you. Uh, and the reason is is because that when that you have a larger battle group, the you always add size to the damage and the uh, the attack rolls and the soak rolls. 
And since they're a size three and their natural damage is uh, a 16. Uh, so then it would go 19 and then they got one over on you. So then the threshold adds it to the 20. But if yours is a nine, they're rolling 11. So let's. Wow. So um, they do not. So battle groups do not reap initiative, but they do like and give it to themselves, but they do take initiative from you. So that is going to bump you down to a six. And then the tyrants who got hit, but have a natural soak of 10. No, 13. I'm sorry. Uh, are only going to have a six rolled at them. They, however, will take four damage to their magnitude. Bringing them down to a six as that you are grazed. Uh, the swarm of sharks grazes you and uh, bites in bites deeply into some of the tyrants and, dr- and draws more and more blood into the water. That is the end of that round of combat. Uh, you get to regain five motes. And it is now the tyrant's turn. Being the elite group of fighters that they are, they are not deterred by a few injuries, uh, especially after watching Tarali and how she's often able to soak through her injuries and keep on battling without any change. So they'll be, that's, that's what they've learned to do themselves. And so they'll charge right back in there, uh, trying to get tit for tat and take their blood out on them. Okay. Uh, you are going to be rolling their attack, which would be a, uh, 14 again. Against the Fog Shark's defense of uh, four, I believe. Yes, four. Seven on that attack. Ooh. Okay, so then that's going to be three over. You have a damage of 15, which makes it 18 then. And then the Fog Shark's stoke. Currently is a 12, I believe. 12, yes. So I believe that would be six damage that you're rolling. Yes, numbers. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. We're, we'll, we'll, if it wasn't a if it was higher than a six, then we will. Four damage. Bringing their magnitude down to a three. The. Fog sharks are bloodied and beaten as that you are dealing with them and like just the uh the, the tyrants are taking out swaths of them and as it one shark falls and uh lays dying, another pushes through the the fog and like just pushes the corpse to the side. Uh, as they are almost like uh, way too large piranhas coming for for you and your men. The Megalodon is going to go at eight now as well. As that it sunk down into the, the through the fog and out, it spins underneath you, but you, uh, your trained battlefield awareness knows that it's coming and it is going to come up and try to, um, not bite you, but instead is going to spin as it comes up and try to like tail swipe you and like knock to Raleigh from, uh, her position where that she is now commanding her troops and like smash you against a wall. How would you like to deal with that? I want to grab its tail and throw it off balance, which I guess would essentially be a parry. Yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll call that a parry. Um, so the way that you would raise the raise your parry in this case would be using the brawl excellency that I know that you have. Since, you know, that's also your martial arts excellency. 
Mm-hmm. That should become the hammer. Yep. And I will absolutely give you uh I will absolutely give you an extra uh an extra point of defense, which should bring you up to a six, and then whatever else you want to spend on it. Blow the four moats for to get two points for Perry. Yep. Yeah, and that would knock you, and that would bring you up to an eight for your parry. Marvelous. Five. Uh, you, you 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 don't have to roll it. I did it again, didn't I? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Ignore it. I mean, it it didn't hit with a five. A, fi- a five is still pretty good, but man, it it is not able to hit you. So you carry this thing, and it is now your turn. Good, if that's my mercy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How are how are you going to follow up from that sweet parry? So, question for technicalities: Is the shark kind of already? in the air, so to speak, since it tried to come up and do a spinning attack, and I'm grabbing it while it's in the air. Yeah, let's go with that. Marvelous. So, uh, Sorelli's plan, now that she has dodged the shark with her sized up, and he missed her with a spin, and she has his tail while he's in the air, is going to be to with her very strong muscles <clears throat> flex and spin them around and toss them up even higher um, and use her rising dragon uppercut launching me and the shark into the air to punch the shark and since he was technically already in the air and we're I tossed him up even higher uh, we'll be able to add essence additional damage and double nines on the damage roll so when the shirt comes at you, you punch it in the jaw, right? Like, that's what they say. Right. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, so the one thing that I do want to uh, just remind you of is that um, since you're doing this as a decisive attack, you would be using your. Um, you would be only using your initiative if you hit for damage, which your initiative is currently at a six. So, I mean, you would you would actually be rolling nine damage. Yeah, you would you you would be rolling nine damage for that, but you get to double nines and tens, uh, or at least essence nines and tens, which could be really good if I get nines and tens. If you get nines and tens, but but also like that that is a. I mean, alternatively, it could be the same mechanic where I spin the shark and punch him and just use the champion's hook, which is a withering, and I ignore five points of the opponent's soak. Um, I'm going to let you know that you are going to want to um, you are going to want to wither him uh, because this thing does have a hardness of 10, which means that you need to make a decisive strike of at least 10 to even like actually damage it. Oh, dear. Yeah. It has very thick shark hide. So in that case, yeah, same, same description, but you're going to champions hook it with uh, with withering. And I will give you uh, for that description, I will give you a two dot stunt. So uh, two extra dice and an automatic success. And then, you know, anything else you want to pump into that. This thing has an evasion of. This thing has a parry of four. It technically has an evasion of zero, so. But it is going to try and parry you with a fin. Adorable, almost. I mean, the fin is like the size of you, so. All right. So I am champion hooking this thing. Guess that'll be it for now. So we got two dice of success and the champion's hook. So what what am I rolling again exactly for an attack? So that would be uh, your dex in martial arts uh, would be the roll. And then. uh, And then you have the traits of a smash fist, which I now have to look up. We shall see. So smash the fist with onslaught of five. 
Yes. Uh, so Smash Fists give you. Oh, oh, dear. I don't I... think that we've been doing your withering damage, right, Michaela? <laughs> should I have been doing better? <laughs> yes. Yes, you should have. Well, you know, I've been doing pretty good up to now doing it wrong. <laughs> So what did Smash Fist give you is your you have an accuracy of plus five, which means that all of your rolls uh, to hit something are at a plus five. Yeah, we've not been doing that. Yeah. Now, granted, this is only when you're in your form. If you're out of your form, it doesn't count. So that would set your base at a 15, I believe. That would be correct. And then your damage is a plus 10, is, is basically your strength plus 10. And you have an overwhelming of three. So even if that it were to soak all of it, like even if you couldn't get past this thing's natural soak, you would always roll three dice. Fun. <laughs> yeah. So assuming that you're not going to like pump your uh, your attack with uh, become the hammer or anything like that. Um, you should be rolling 15 dice to hit. And then the damage would be, I b- believe that you have maxed out strength. So the damage should be 15 as well. Assuming that you can hit a four on 15 dice, Michaela. I sure hope so. <laughs> or I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 17 dice and an auto success. You know, I thought about pumping it with a Beckham the Hammer, but I feel like I might be okay without it. I think that you might be okay without it, but let's find out. Or uh, you get to reroll a total of ones equal to your strength score. Wow. And also, you always do an automatic success on post soak die on withering rolls. Yay! <laughs> okay, so go ahead and roll. 17 dice? Well, there's no ones to re-roll, uh, so 9 plus 1 auto, so 10 successful hits. That would be 10 to hit, which is uh, 6 over what that it's uh, what that it's evasion is, or what that it's parry is. Uh, your damage is a 15 plus 6, so that's 21. But then it does have a soak. Um, and its soak is pretty good because of that shark hide. It has a natural soak of 16. So it's at 5. Yeah, so you are uh, right, but also you use the cha- but but you use the champion's hook. Which is going to lower its soak by five to eleven. I feel like we just said too many numbers. I'm gonna There's have to. So many numbers. I know, right? Okay, so its soak is at eleven. That that's the important part. You do a damage of fifteen plus six, so that's twenty-one. Okay, so you are rolling ten dice for me. That that is your damage dice after soak. And then you also get you're you're going to get an automatic success on damage. And uh yeah, I think that's it. You're gonna get an automatic success on damage. Okay, right, so roll 10 and then an auto success in there. Yep. 10. Okay. Did this I punch is through get... the shark? <laughs> so with withering, you don't punch through the shark, but you've basically set it up to be screwed over. Uh, This thing does have the legendary size merit, which makes it so then that uh, it's extraordinarily difficult for someone your size to engage it in combat. Basically what this means is it doesn't take any onslaught penalties and, uh, and it can't be crashed uh, below one initiative, unless it takes post soak damage of ten dice, which it did. So yeah, so you actually managed to crash this thing—a feat that should be impossible for you. But well, that should be pr- impossible for a mortal. 
But because of your martial arts training and everything like that, you take this thing down to negative two initiative. You take 10. So you are now at 16. You go up by one because you hit. So you're now at 17. And then you get plus five. Because you crashed it. Taking it to 22. And I. I want to clarify here, Michaela, you almost tripled your initiative in that one go. Marvelous. (laughs) You guys proceed forward, and we're going to swing over to a different part of this office building, where Ricky and Ferris have uh, just entered. As I said before, there are many little cubicles lined up in a row for everybody to sit at and do work, but you do not see anybody. There is the light sound of brush strokes and people talking odd, almost electric hum in the air that is something that you are all not used to. As you can see, the ceiling is lit with uh, essence lamps that use, well, to put it bluntly, first age technology to keep everything here lit. Or maybe just sorcery. What do the two of you want to do? I'm going to look at all the, like, the paperwork and stuff and, like, see if anything is familiar, which it probably won't be, um, if it's not familiar to Divine. But, like, see if I can read anything or just see what it is as I casually, like, walk through the office in the direction that we need to go. Like, just kind of casually looking about, like, I'm reading over people's shoulders, stuff like that. Ferris, you find nothing that you can read. As with Divine and Elian, the words are blurred. Everything here is just off-center enough that you cannot read it. It's as if that you are looking at something through someone else's glasses, who is who the prescription is certainly not right for you. I'm going to do just a quick check of the room with my spirit mirror technique to see if there's anything that is invisible here. Ooh, not a bad call. Also, if anyone is just hiding from me, uh, since my staff is at level three, everything gets minus four to stealth checks against us. Oh, boy. Um, so when they, you do this, um, you can see through your mirror that the office here through your mirror, appears to be very busy and full of people going about uh, their day. Uh, The mirror, it's uh, inside the mirror, you can see people of all shapes, sizes, creeds, and everything. There are some people who have giant lion heads. There are people who have uh, multiple heads on them. Others who are dressed in, uh, who look more human, but are dressed in the finery of ages long past. There is at least one gigantic jade lion standing by a door. But you don't see that outside of your mirror. Um, so I can talk to people in my mirror. So I guess I'll try to. Mm hmm. Um. What do you say? Excuse me. As soon as you say, excuse me, uh, some of the people that are around you look and look very confused. Hey, uh, can I, can I borrow y'all's bathroom? I, uh, I got, I got kind of lost. They look around very confused and begin talking. And you can understand them. Yeah. Uh, sure can. Now, now, granted, Ferris doesn't hear this, but you do understand them uh, as pointing towards an area further in. And basically they say, uh, 
nearest bathrooms by the crossroads. Do they point me in a direction? Uh, yes, they point you in a direction further in. Hey, thanks, fellas. I uh, appreciate you. You're doing doing good work out here. Uh, bye bye. They they continue to look very confused. <laughs> One of them kind of smiles when you say they're doing very good work, and then he's just like, yeah. And then they all just kind of go back to their work. Ferris is going to look at Ricky and be like, is this another one of those ghost things that I won't understand? Oh, totally. Got it. And she's just going to keep on walking with Ricky. After quite a bit of time, as that uh, you guys have had time to regen essence yet again. How much? Uh, uh, five motes. Almost all of it. Eventually, you guys do make it to a crossroads. There's a large uh, section of the cubicles that have kind of uh, moved away from this larger area that has a uh, table with a little bit of food and stuff on it. And you can see across from the crossroads the familiar forms of Divine and Elian. And as the two of you are looking at each other, you can see sitting at the table is an older looking gentleman wearing some loose fitting clothing with hair uh, pulled back into a loose uh, bun and and like kind of like chopsticks put into the bun and he is playing a game of cards on the table and he looks up to see both of both groups and smiles a uh, jovial smile and says, huh, took you all long enough. Why don't you have a seat? So here's the fun thing. <sighs> He's been crashed, and I have muscle shift, which I can use immediately upon crashing something. Oh my god, are you gonna are you gonna muscle are you gonna basically like muscle shift while it's while after you just did a launcher on him, and then are you now going to do the uh, the rising dragon uppercut? Well, I could, but also. <laughs> Technically, Kaiser Beat Drive is considered a simple type, which would go with Muscle Shift. Uh, you are correct. I mean, so is uh, so is so is Rising Dragon Uppercut. They they, they are both. Uh, mm, no, actually, you you said you were using Kaiser Beat Drive or uh, or the Kaiser Assault. Beat Drive is a simple type. Yes. Uh, so the reason that I am saying no on that is because um, it it literally says in the terrestrial thing that uh, it cannot be comboed into via muscle shift for dragon blooded. Oh, it does. Damn. All right. But well, you, <laughs> but you can combo into rising dragon uppercut. Marvelous. Let's do that then. So, immediately upon crashing the shark, uh, Trolley's muscles, sensing the weakness of the shark, goes into attack mode, uh, like how a shark would go after blood in the water. So, you have dodged this shark, throw, and then basically hit it hard enough that I, I feel like that it, like, slams up against the... Uh, against the ceiling of the tunnel and is now coming back down to you and you are going to do the uh the 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 uppercut at it. Does that is that about right? Correct. As it's coming back down, I will strike it with my fist into that jaw to see if it's possible to break a megalodon's jaw. Well, there's only one way to find out. I'm going to absolutely give you a three dot stunt for that. Cause like this, this looks like a fighting game thing in my head and I love it. I absolutely love it. So you're going to get, uh, you're going to get uh, two extra dice and two auto successes and then whatever else you want to roll on that. 
Uh, the only thing to keep in mind, since this is a decisive attack, you are only rolling your dex and martial arts. You do not add accuracy or damage of the weapon to uh, to these kinds of rolls. Which is fair, because I feel like that's what we've been doing most of the time anyway, so that's what I'm used to. Mm-hmm. I mean, because that's still 10, you know? Yeah. Still 10, plus uh, an extra two dice, plus if you want to pump it with uh, Become the Hammer. Which we definitely will be. Okay, how much extra are you going to pump it? Let me see where my moats are. I'm going to deduct out my muscle shift and tell you how many I'm going to use to become the hammer. Okay, that's fair. I'll go ahead and throw in four moats, or five moats. I'll max it out. Okay, so then you're going to be rolling 17 dice. With two automatic successes. 13. Well, you definitely hit. Um, You are now going to be rolling. Let's see. So you have 22 initiative. You are going to be rolling. 22 dice of damage. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I lied. You would be rolling 25 damage because you are adding essence additional damage and you double all nines and tens. Well, nines and tens up to essence, so three three of the nines and tens. You're only able to double up to three of those tens. So I'm sorry, Michaela, it's only 13 damage. It's only 13 lethal damage that you have dealt to this giant shark with your fist. And it's lucky that's all I did. Very lucky. Uh, this thing is... Like, how? I'm going to let you know, it's a megalodon. It's got a lot of health levels. It is not dead. But what brutal fucking scar do you give this megalodon? Like, do you, like, punch out one of its eyes? Do you, like... Oh, wait, no, you said you wanted to see if you can break its jaw. I do. I want to see if I can break the shark's jaw or unhinge it. So its mouth never works right again. You absolutely do. You break that thing's jaw in such a way that if it were to try and heal up, it never will properly. So it's always going to have like this jaw, like if it manages to escape from you, it is always going to have this jaw that is perpetually open and very hard for it to close properly, if at all. And it is always cocked to one side as that where that you struck it is always going to have like basically like a permanent imprint of your fist into its very bones. I would love to see the x-ray of that, but yeah, that that's what we did. Well, now it's the swarm's turn and they're going to, they're going to try. They're going to try as best as they can to take you and the tyrants down because they're a swarm and there's more blood in the water. The Megalodon is a little smarter, so I'm going to let you know on its turn it is going to try and run. Good luck. But this swarm is absolutely in a in an absolute frenzy. Uh, they are going to kind of like royal and like go over you and the tyrants. They're going to be uh, attacking with a trying to bite and and like smash and just like take take whatever that they can and take you down. They are going to have a dice pool of 10. How are you going to be defending? Well, attempt to parry. Any shark that comes at me. By now being emboldened after punching Mega Mist. We'll attempt to grab any incoming shark by its jaw to see if I can parry its attack as it comes head on. Um, to see if I can snap their jaw open. Holy shit. Okay, yeah, I'm going to give you an extra two on the parry so that should bring you up to a seven um did you want to pump it any higher than that with like become the hammer uh i i will let you know just to, just to to let you know one of the reasons that uh battle groups are super dangerous to player characters is that 
if they can take you in, if they can crash you because they don't reap initiative, if they can crash you, they start dealing health damage. There, there is no soak. They just start dealing health damage. I mean, I have a decent amount of health just in case. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll um, bolster it. We said we could blow fo- four moats on it to raise it by another two, so that would put me at a nine parry. Yep, that would put you at a nine parry. Okay, sounds good. And the tyrants are at a parry of seven. So let's see what they can do. Despite their best attempts with a six, good by most standards, but with a six, the tyrants have had enough losses and enough. Enough people have let their blood be spilled for this uh, combat against animals. And they say no more. So, yes, you are at a crossroads of the cubicle variety. There's a table with a little bit of food and everything. And a guy sitting there. Uh, He looks to you all. Why, hello there. Nice of you all to finally make it. It's been about, uh, hmm. according to your regular t- uh, way of uh, t- keeping time, it's been about two and a half days since uh, since I was told you all would be here. Who told you that? The person who gives me orders. And who's the person that gives you orders? Well, that would be just rude of me. I, I realize that I've just not introduced myself. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, please have a seat. My name's Rags. And he kind of, like, ruffles his, like, kind of not great looking, like, shirt and everything. But in the process of doing that, uh, you all catch on the light. Like, he has multiple rings that are, like, glittering with jewels on them. Mm. Uh, Brendan, do I still have my, my mirror up? Yeah, yeah, you can. Does he look like what he looks like in the mirror? Yes, he does. Interesting. Yes, it's a. Uh, mm. I see that you're trying to uh, suss out my uh, my nature there, good sir. Uh, don't worry, not here to hurt. I actually really do like a lot of the work that you all do. Hmm. That's good, I guess. That's very good. You 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 all have been very good for my business. Very good for my bureau. Oh. Fantastic. Anyway, uh, it, I, I'm honestly quite amazed. Uh, it, it, it's very rare for Princes of the Earth to find this uh, area. It's kind of a... He kind of like leans in and kind of like whispers direct... Not, he kind of whispers at in the direction of Ricky. Uh, it's kind of one of those weird in between not quite well defined areas of uh, of the world you know <laughs> that's why you can't really see anybody and they can't really see you uh-huh anyway no please please sit eat have fun enjoy yourselves i i made this little banquet specifically for you all Though you do appear to be missing one. I'm sure that she'll be around just fine shortly enough. Uh, So my question is, uh, do you all sit down with this man or do you just ignore him and leave? Ferris will uh, cautiously take a seat. Can I do a read intentions to see if he's actually uh, benevolent? Absolutely. Okay, uh, to let you know, uh, Divine, he has a guile of six. Gotcha. A really high guile. Would you like to stunt this in any way or uh, throw some essence at it? Uh, yeah. Uh, Divine's going to reach out and reach out for uh, Rags's hand. Or reach out to offer his hand to Rags. 
Uh, Amalar Divine, of course, you probably already knew, uh, but, you know, it's impolite not to make proper introductions. Uh, so you've been waiting for us for two days. You are quite the patient man. I assume you're going to explain to us why you've been waiting for us after we take part in this banquet, right? That was always my intention, uh, MLR Divine, but if you don't wish to take part, I completely understand. Caution is the greater part of valor, after all. I do completely understand that uh, that sentiment, after all. I mean, it is two-day-old food. I mean, shit. I'll eat it. I'm fucking hungry. Yeah, but can't you not be poisoned? Uh, so the food spread, as that you guys are looking at it, looks like small uh, plates that appear to be uh, covered. And if that one of you were to open it up, you would see whatever that your favorite dish is steaming in front of you. So, like uh, for Ferris's case, it might be like like a bunch of like uh, grilled veggies and uh, maybe whatever her favorite meat is uh, or whatever her favorite like rare uh, vegetable is from like the scavenger lands. I was going to say, I think we decided she was a vegetarian, so I don't think she'd have meat. Yeah, I, bl- I believe that that was the case. Uh, like, like for Ricky, it is just a pyramid of falafel and uh, yeah, cheerskirin uh, cart food. Yeah, I, I tear that up. Yeah, and yes, I cannot be poisoned, Cody. You're right. For uh, for divine, it is probably a look shy and delicacy of some kind, and for Elian, it is. Well, I don't know. What does Elian like in their food? That's a good looking question. I don't know what their favorite meal would be. I feel like that it's something reasonable and modest. With like a mild little twist in there somewhere, either flavor wise or appearance wise. I would say probably flavor wise. But yeah, uh, based on Rags's grip when we shake hands, the looks in his eyes, and just the overall vibe of the place. I want to read intention. Okay, uh, with. With you all kind of assisting, I guess, with that, I will uh, give Divine a two-dot stunt for that, as that he's trying to pry a little bit of information out of rags. Now, now specifically, your, looking, your question is, for read intentions, is, is he benevolent, or is he benevolent to you? Uh, to us. Like, is he actually here to help us? Okay. Because those are two separate things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll give you a two dot stunt for that. Uh, go ahead and pump it as much as you want, and then give me that roll. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and spend uh, two moats on loquacious, uh, four moats on loquacious courtier technique to add two successes to that. Okay. So that's three. That got you halfway there. Nine. All right. With nine successes, you can tell that Rags is absolutely positively benevolent towards you all. You do get a sense that he does not have a normal moral compass, so to speak. But, you know, I don't think that anyone in this party really does either. Nope. You all fall Uh, into some shade of gray. I like to think I'm pretty moral, thank you. You work for a crime family and rob people through extortion. Yeah, yeah you tell right. people there's ghosts in their boxes. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, fun, fun stuff. You got me. Nuts. Like, you also went to prison for the lulls. No. He was morally good in the aspect of not wanting to, like, kill people. It wasn't for the lulls. I went to free my friend who was wrongly in prison. That's, that's nice. Which I had to be to free my friend who was lawfully, unlawfully imprisoned. 
I mean, he was quite lawfully imprisoned. It is against the realm law to be an anathema. Free my, free my homie Minami. What can I say? Yeah, that's why you guys had to take my assistant and hide him where I can't know where he is because I can't lie about it. So. Wrong anathema. <laughs> still, still, still can't have that around, though. I know they're different ones, but I'm just saying, can't have that one around either. So, he, when you all sit, he looks around and just goes, you all have been fantastic. I cannot thank you all enough for the amount of work that you've brought me and all of my, uh, my underlings. It's very good. Just, he, he does like the little chef kiss. It's like, so this is my way of thanking you. It's been a long time coming, seeing, uh, such... Interesting people rise up from the ranks of uh, a little family that in other places might not have succeeded. And I'm so very joyed to see you all. What work are you in? Oh, well, I mean, if it wasn't obvious, I run. Well, I, I have a small section in uh, one of the bureaus here. Uh Let's call it, uh, hmm. Let's call it what it is. Uh, I work for the Bureau of Criminal Activity. Uh, is any of this ringing any sort of bells to me? Not that you've heard of. Yeah, that's the question I was asking is, uh, we know it's scenarios. Do we know it's scenarios? Um, I will let you know that uh, I will let you know at a character that it is not sedar. You are not talking to a scenario here. Mm. Should I give my full title? I feel like that that didn't get as much of a response out of you all as it should have. Well, you're... Are you recording criminal activity, or... Oh. Me, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm helping assist it. Right, okay. Dragon-blooded, I'm sorry. I'm so used to dealing with people that have a little bit more mm, experience with the five out with the, with the four outer realms of uh, creation. Uh, yes. Right. So proper introductions. I know, uh, MLR divine, uh, Ricky, Resh Ferris, Renal Elian. Pleasure to meet you all. I am. Hmm. It's been so long since I've had to use a proper title. Uh, I am Laughing Ragamuffin, God of Smuggling, and uh, the director of the Bureau of Criminal Activity. Oh, yeah, I, I, heard, I heard of you, actually. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I am a follower, I, I'm, a, I'm a pal of one of the other gods, Chiroscuro. Oh, yes, which, uh, gra Grandmother Bright, right? No, no. And I shake the manacle on my wrist. Oh, Broken Maiden. Hmm. Fantastic. See, that's why that I like you. You're... You do the work, but it's not like the guild where that they think that, oh, we can just enslave people. No, you've still got morals. It, it's, uh, it's, not, it's nice. You know, the people, they're not cargo. Unless, of course, you know, they are because they ask you to make them. You, you, but, you know, there's a difference. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like, you know, you can smuggle people. If they're trying to escape when they uh, want hardships. To smuggle. Yeah. Yeah, right. Sure. Consent is key. Yeah. Yeah. If you're helping a family of five escape the uh, tyrannical rule of some asshole who will kill them and ruin their entire life, yeah, sure, it's going to go away. That sounds fine to me. This area is what that I, I and uh, the rest of the Bureau of Criminal Activity uh, have been calling uh, the back rooms. Uh, it's not easily accessible to the rest of creation, but... We have a few little ways to slip outside of the, uh, outside of, uh, of, of the normal, uh, bounds that, uh, that, that pattern spiders have put up. And it's all a little bit, uh, 
he just kind of like motions in the air, like a little bit of like, it's, it's a little bit above my head, but yes, that's how you're able to come here. Um, and not be, hmm, treated like fifth class citizens. I saw all the folks in the in the mirror. Hey, are those? Uh, I, I don't even know what those are. Are they like your coworkers? Uh, I don't know. Yes, coworkers. Okay. Uh, most of, most of them are probably gods of some kind. Uh, I believe that the the this area of the back rooms is actually probably closer to the bureau of uh, abstract concepts, most likely. Uh, oh. Okay, that's cool, I guess. Um, yeah. Well, well, I mean, it, it works perfectly. You know, the back the back rooms is an abstract concept. Therefore, obviously, the back rooms would be placed within the Bureau of Abstract Concepts. And these back rooms connect to all the major points on creation. Oh, well, actually, that's more of the calibration gates or the Yu- Yushan gate. No, don't, don't worry too much about that. This, uh, specifically, these back rooms are connected with the, uh, well, honestly, the, uh, the, it, it's kind of a way to sidestep some of the more dangerous aspects of the, uh, the, the device that you all are currently working within. Uh, to head towards your 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 family's secret vault, yes, that that's where you're all going. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where we're heading. So, uh, where 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 have you all been so far? Well, we were inside maze. Uh, that was some fun talking. Oh, you. You got to meet Three Weeks Labyrinth. Yeah. Uh, I think now they're technically One Weeks Labyrinth. Or No Weeks Labyrinth. I don't know. We 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 talked in a couple circles for what felt like three weeks. And now they're smaller. Divine kind of logic to his way out of it. it it's, a good, it's a good shortcut, for sure. Don't, don't expect it to always work, though. So after that, we walked the Cerulean Path. Uh, that's where, uh, we got split up from Tabralian or Tyrants. Uh, they are, uh, they're probably done by now and should be catching up, but they stopped to fight the, uh, Fog Sharks. Which then switches us back to the top of initiative. Uh, you can regain five moats. And the top of initiative is currently the tyrants at an eight. Right. Well, uh, the true sharks in the water, being the tyrants, are going to be emboldened by all the blood around them and the battle and the gore and just all the fins they've collected. We're going to have so many fins to go in our free noodles that we also get. Like, it's going to be so good. A, a banquet. Um, and all the... Sh- teeth we've collected uh which we can sell as souvenirs um and are going to rush back in for more okay uh you are going to be rolling me uh let's see 14 dice for them oh holy shit wow i did good (laughs) yeah you did real good there holy hell 15 successes versus the fog sharks evasion of seven. No, no, I'm sorry. Four. So that's 11 over. Your damage is. Your damage is 15 and you got. Okay, so then that would put it at 26. They have a soak of 12. So you are rolling me 14 dice of damage. Not as good that time. (laughs) Not as impressive this time with five. However, with five, that is enough to bring them down to magnitude zero. 
uh, since they are just a swarm of fog sharks, they, as soon as that you kill enough of their numbers, they scatter. And the swarm is taken off of the combat. There is only you, the tyrants, and the megalodon. And you get to go before the megalodon. I will let you know it is going to attempt a retreat. Do you want to just let it retreat and we can end the combat here? Or do you want to go for the kill? Uh, Obviously, I'm going for the kill. (laughs) Okay. So right now, it is... uh, I I feel that this thing is kind of like dazed and on, on the partially like on the ground of like the tunnel and just kind of like looking around and trying to like get its bearings and trying to find a way to escape. You are currently at initiative three. What do you want to do? Actually, I just realized something. The tyrant should also be attacking the Megalodon, shouldn't they? Because they are also a battle group that can hit everything in. Theoretically, yeah. Do you want me to just uh, take those last uh, those last rolls and apply it to the Megalodon? Sure, and then we'll circle back to me. So then you are actually rolling 10 for this. Doesn't sound like a lot. But they are dealing direct damage to its health track. Three successes. Okay. Um, Trolley, this is going to sound really weird, but how do the tyrants kill this thing? Uh, Being the biggest, baddest group in the sea at the moment, or tunnel, it's all the same. Uh, They're going to... Descend on it like berserkers in a fury. Um, Just on a blood craze at this point after scaring away the other sharks. And all simultaneously launch at this megalodon trying to rip its fins off and its teeth out because it can't clamp down on any of them in defense because its jaws permanently broken. So... They have no qualms reaching in and just detoothing and definning this megalodon shark for souvenirs. That is amazing. Okay. Well, that was the combat. You are a little bit behind the rest of the crew. Uh, actually, I'd say quite a bit, considering that the combat actually probably took... Uh, a lot longer than you thought. You know, organizing people and collecting all the fins and everything like that. You're you're a decent chunk behind behind the rest of the crew. So, do you go do you and the tyrants go to march and catch up? I uh, yes, that was always the plan was once we made sure Everything was safe and clear, and we got our ingredients and souvenirs to start marching forward uh, to catch up with everybody else. Uh, I'm going to just kind of skip forward and get you to the interesting parts, because the other two already had to figure out the the puzzles. Um, But basically, you you march through the uh, the tunnel, and eventually uh, it gets super dark in, in there, and then eventually you find a... Uh, a large staircase going down that is initially meant for like giants, uh, like people like uh, like Mountain and uh, and Carsa and like the the people who have like the giant merit. But as that you and uh, the crew continue. Um, or as you and the tyrants continue, the steps become larger and larger and larger with, uh, with harder to deal with gaps between them. Do you all press on recklessly or slowly and like taking your time to get everyone down? I feel like slow and steady wins the race. 
especially since some people are probably injured. Yes, that is correct. There are, uh, they did take a little bit of magnitude damage. Um, but yes, so instead he will win the race. It takes roughly a day's travel to get through this. Um, you are marching with a hundred some odd people, some of which are injured and you are having to go over rough terrain. I know that you have war charms that can help with that, but you know, it is still a, this was still a very long journey for everyone else as well. And after a little bit, uh, you get, you all get to a large set of double doors that the tyrants could easily pass through. And when you open that up, you find yourself in a large office. Thank you for taking the time to enjoy our show. If you liked what you heard, why not leave a review or tell a friend about us? It helps get the good word out about the work we put into this show. If you wanted to ask us any questions, you can contact us through Twitter at A Pair of Dice Lost or email at A Pair of Dice Lost at gmail.com. The theme song for this game is Dragon Dance by Raphael Crux, used under a Creative Commons license. And for making it this far, I saw that cool thing you did, so have some stunt dice. Did you say we're counting glass as water? Yes, but there's no fog for them to actually come through. They they do specifically require fog. But we're counting glass as water. So <laughs> glass is a type of water, is technically a liquid, which is why that they can go through it. A but water they can't. Is this they, some sort of dumb, like, exalt? What's the dumb exalted reason for why glass is a liquid? Glass is a liquid in real life. Yeah, glass is a liquid in real life. Glass is a solid crystalline structure. If you look at glass windows from, like, colonial times, uh, the bottoms are thicker because the glass is gradually flown down to the bottom. It's really silly. It takes forever, but it is technically not a solid. Uh, I looked it up. Glass, however, is actually neither a liquid, super cooled or otherwise, nor a solid. It is a morphous solid, a state somewhere between those two states of matter. And yet, glass's liquid-like properties are not enough to explain the thicker bottom windows because glass atoms move too slowly to change for it to be visible. Glass is a non-Newtonian fluid. (laughs) Okay, as much as I appreciate science, I did want to get fog sharks in here. That's why we're treating glass as a liquid in that case. You are out of the fog sharks range is what I'm telling you, because Tarali is keeping the fog sharks busy. I want to know if glass is a liquid for the sake of I can walk on liquid. You can walk on glass. Yes, but I was still curious. You never know when this might come up in a weird way something eventually. Um, I'm going to say not. it does not count as a liquid for the purpose of your past ability. Because if it did, you I would be negating the point of uh, Divine's wall walking merit. See, these these are questions that are asked for a reason. Also, it if takes, we're under the ocean, how do we know the sun's setting? Uh, because the sun's come. Because it's like depending on what level you're at, it's already dark underneath the ocean. There's a certain point where you reach where light is not going to penetrate through the water. Uh, yeah, but you if were, you're in a glass, glass thing. You can't be that deep. You were you were deep enough that like you could basically see the uh you could see the port of Chiroscuro. No, I'm not gonna get caught up in the semantics of it. We're we're just low enough that we can see light. Which is yes. pretty not very low. Well I'm well, you know what? This isn't the real world. This is exalted. The light is that bright. You see what happens when you put me and Chris together in Feywild? Yeah, this happens. You're right. You're not I even can in either the give Feywild I can, right now. I can either give you zany logic or I can give you actual logic. Unfortunately, you have me in actual logic mode. Oh, right. Your thing just happens, doesn't it, Tyler? It, it does. 
<laughs> okay. I was like, I'm waiting for them to roll. And I was like, oh, right. It just happens. Sorry. No, you're fine. I honestly was not thinking. And I'm going to offload and uh, go use the bathroom. Damn it. <laughs> uh, excellent. God damn freaking cliffhangers. We'll be back in like 10 minutes. Doesn't matter. It doesn't make them any better. Like they're good, but damn it. <laughs>